nice. Okay. So, uh, like I said, we'll just go through it. There's no particular point of the conversation. Um, I myself, just to like, so we don't have too many like empty spaces, do have certain questions and it'll be basic ones. Like kind of like art yourself. Um, you also obviously work with uh, the Creative Crossing. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit about that. Um, your experience with art here in Kern County and then kind of just your goals with your art. Those will be like the the go-to when we ain't got shit to talk about. Okay. <laughs> um, but I guess introduce yourself and then we'll just go from there. Um, Jen, Jennifer, uh, also known as One Line Dime on Instagram. I get a lot of questions about what that means, but it, it's everyone's interpretation, I guess. Wait, is but it online or one line? One line. I thought it said online dime. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one line dime. That's hilarious. One line at a time. Okay. I'm an artist, I guess. If you, I don't know. <laughs> For the most part. I'm Was your name taken? <laughs> no. No one thought of that. No, your uh, was your real name taken that you had to oh, use that nickname? No, no. I just, at first when I started it, I just wanted to be like incognito, you know, but I don't really post my name to begin with. I don't think it's, it's here and there, I think in my profile, but why, why do you, why do you think you do, you do that too? Cause you like, um, didn't know if you're going to keep at it doing the art. Yeah. At first it was just like a small, if you look at the page, it starts with, uh, like some henna that I w was getting into. And then I just moved more into doing art. But for me, when a lot of people ask, like, what's your favorite? Do you paint? Do you draw? I like to do everything because anything literally can be an art, you know, as long as you're producing, creating, you know, putting what's inside of you out. So like expressing. So I like to paint, draw, um, sew. I like to cook. Um, what do you, what do you sew? You said sew? Mm -hmm. What do you sew? I like to make little... I don't know what there would be called, like plushies, okay. I guess, or like, cute, you know, cute stuff. Uh, crafts, definitely. Like my house is full of, from spray paints to acrylics, sewing machine. Uh, I have like wood stuff. Uh, and what about cooking? Cooking? Uh, actually, I went to culinary school here at BC, uh, yeah. It's a really good program. They're like the second best in California for a, for a really? community college. Mm -hmm. They're really good. They actually have a restaurant up there around by the students. So I was not aware of this. Every Wednesday they do lunch. Thursday is like a buffet. And I think Tuesday is like a, like a gourmet dinner night. But everything's made by the students. And it, it, the kitchen's ran by uh, the chef. But as like the older students watch over so it's kind of like a like a tier of how it's ran but it's a it's a really good program and you learn a lot do you um do you still experiment with making food or or are you kind of just set with what you make so far i do sometimes i randomly just buy something that i don't really use or I've never used before, and then I just make something with it. And it, that, I feel like that's what the art part is. Because sometimes I'll buy a medium, like that gold foil stuff. I've yeah. never used that before. And I, I only used it one time, and it was an interesting experience. Because when I see people lay that stuff down, they it just looks amazing. But definitely takes some practice. But uh, I've never eaten that before. I've seen it like in videos. Mm -hmm. I've never eaten it. It's crazy. <laughs> do you um? Do you plan on on doing more stuff with cooking? Uh, I do. I what I wanted to do during the pandemic was do like a cooking class, because everyone was doing something. You know, like they, everybody was home, so more people were online. They were doing taking online classes and getting hobbies and stuff like that. So I thought. You know, that would be my chance to get one of those, you know, gigs, I guess. But I never I never did it. No? 
my uh, my girlfriend got into make baking during the pandemic, and she made um, mostly pies and cakes, and then got into breads. The good stuff. Oh yeah, bread. It's good to know how to make bread, because then you'll never have to buy bread again. Even though you will Man, buy bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what people think. Same, w- same with like growing stuff. You like during the pandemic, I was like, I'm gonna grow my own tomatoes. I was like, fuck this, all this for five shitty tomatoes. Yeah. Like, it's go, a lot of work. I'll I'll go destroy the planet. Fuck this shit. I'll, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive to the store. <laughs> I just have someone else do the work. You know what? I appreciate the farmers market because you see everyone's hard work, and I'll gladly pay <laughs> for someone else to do it. Have you heard of the people who, who uh, buy? The, I guess they buy their groceries at somewhere, and then claim that they're organic and sell them at the markets. Oh, really? I guess that's like a thing. I don't think it's like a... Oh, what a scam. A concerning thing, but it is something that people do. Like they'll... That's go weird. buy cucumbers from somewhere and then label them as organic. And then I know people... I, I've heard this from... For people who work in the field is what I've heard this from. Is that they'll... <laughs> they, they know people who will buy like the the fruit that's shitty. Um, so they're, they're, they're just dis- discarding it because it's not to the quality that they want for the, the grower wants or the spire. And so people will go back and grab the ones that they discarded because they weren't ready or they're not like a oh. quality and then they'll sell it as organic or something. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes I wonder, cause there's, there's, there's a hustle, there's a hustle for everything. People yeah. are always going to, I I don't worry about it. I still go and I mostly just go to um, Honestly, I just go to see people kind of hustle. I just like to watch people <laughs> hustle, like just trying to sell stuff. Um, and then the different approaches people have, because there's people that are just sitting there, and they're just like hanging out. I'm like, all right. It's interesting. You can learn some tips, probably. And there's loud people. There's people who are just got these uh, personalities for, for selling. Yeah. Um, and then you see some people that you're tripping out because you're like, this guy had to really invest in what he's making. I saw this guy, he had like a pizza urn. And I was like, this guy bought that? I got that, that. Like, it was a business. And a lot of those people are, they're not people who had like hobbies and they're trying to sell. They're really people who are starting businesses and they're looking for like real simple businesses they can start somewhere. So they're selling plants. Yeah. They're selling incense. There's uh, a eclectic mix of people, especially on the one on Sundays cause, because it's a larger. There's a night one now. Oh, really? Yeah. I think they do it at the Robo Bank. Oh, I saw a post about that. It looked pretty cool because it was just, it looked more like vendors type than like a farmer's market. Yeah, that was a, yeah, it was a, yeah, vendors. During Um, the, sorry. You have a, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, during the, no, it was after the pandemic when people started going crazy for like pop-ups. It was like huge for a minute like yeah. pop-ups all the time and uh they started charging vendors you know to be there and it would be like in a parking lot and you'd have to pay for a space you know but some people were doing like a free like we don't care sell your stuff you're already a small business you know you're just a person selling your your art yeah it's just people seeing opportunity maybe yeah They're like, just like the, oh, i'm gonna set this up and the first friday used to be free when they were doing it downtown? Yeah, I think it went up to like 25 bucks or something. And then they started charging people. But like, what was the difference between the beginning and then later? Hmm. You know? And now they don't even do it anymore. Yeah, I forgot what they said they stopped it. I think they just stopped it because of the pandemic. And then I've heard different things. I've heard it's supposed to come back this year. Uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, who knows? Um. Why would change as far as prices? I don't know. I mean, people would think probably them being greedy, but yeah, I think the other part is maybe if if it became pretty consistent, right? So it took off. Obviously, it took off, and if it took off, maybe there was like more trash or you know, whatever the situation. security or something, something, whatever. Some, they need a SWAT team. Some up hopeful <laughs> reason why they would be charging money. Uh yeah, it's it's not for 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 some of the things we need fixing some of these roads yeah definitely um you do a lot of um i guess charitable work so one of them is uh, you work with the the burrito project was it uh i do apple core 
Uh, not that app. Well, I have worked with Apple Core once. Okay. And Burrito Project, I every once in a while, especially when they need help, and I know there's not a lot of people jumping, you know, to be a volunteer, especially on a Sunday. People want to s- sleep in, uh, or they're hungover, you know. But uh, I do my own events. I've been trying to do them every two months, and I just go out and buy stuff or people donate and then uh, I'll try to get what I can from the dollar store well it's not a dollar anymore it's a dollar 29 or something yeah it's pretty but, yeah, yeah. 27, 29, 29. so I try to do Costco but Burrito Project has donated a lot to my I call it feeding friends to my charity I guess I would call it a group it's literally just me and my boyfriend and we go to uh Mill Creek, and we just give away stuff, but it's literally that easy to just grab some stuff, go out, and because pe- as soon as people come, start like coming over, it, stuff goes fast, or they'll let uh, their friends know, other people that are out there, because y- they'll just pick their stuff up and then disappear out into the streets, you know. Now, do people have to show proof of like need? No. They just kind of show up. Like, if you walk up and you say you need it, then, you know, who am I to say that you, you don't, don't need, yeah. you know, a roll of toilet paper and... There's no test, no pop quiz. No. Nah. Like, show, you, show me your... <laughs> Some people that are just, like, randomly walking through the park, they'll I'll even give them stuff. If they come up and they show interest, you know, if you want it, take it. So, so why, why be charitable? You know, I've heard people say um, you can't. You can't save money if you're spending money. Mm, well, I do what I can. So I, I aim for helping at least 30 people. And it's been less than that a couple of times because I might, like, if I don't get donations, then I pay out of pocket. And if I can't make it, then I do what, what I can, you know. I know they're going to appreciate it, whether it's 30 or 5, you know. At least I'm helping somebody and can the people who are, are grabbing food can they make a donation if they'd like, like they got like change or something um i've had people come and bring stuff and just leave and nice. i thought that was cool but uh i try to post ahead of time and through the posts that has let people know that we were there and people have showed up to bring stuff and they didn't even ask for anything or stayed they just brought the stuff and took off that's what's up. And then um, let's talk about some of the art you make. I know I've noticed uh, the art you make, the art you do in the murals that you've made, and some of the local projects that they had with stipends. Um, how's how's um, how's your approach on that? How's that going? Um, so when I started actually showing people my art, because I was just like, do it at home it's a hobby and then actually seeing there's a there's a big community here for artists and yeah whether you know it or not it's it's there and there's a lot of subcultures i guess i guess you would call it um for a lot of things here a lot of interesting things with the art groups I started with Creative Crossings because they post, you know, call the artists and they're not uh, discriminatory. You want to, they give you a chance. So that helped me open up as an artist to show other people what I can do. And, and that return is feeling a confidence in myself to work on art more often. When you feel like you're not very good at something, you're not going to. Well, some people try and try to get better. But yeah. uh, on the other hand, you feel a little down and you don't want to do it anymore, you know, or it just becomes like a, just a side hobby you do every once in a while, doodles and whatnot. But uh, I felt like that pushed me to be more confident in my art. And so with that, I've done a lot of volunteer work and it that feels good too because 
you're putting your art and your talent out for the community something like positive do you have any any projects in mind now that you've gotten more experience with uh, working in groups and doing um, some of the funding for some of this stuff is there anything like has there a, like a mural or a wall you've seen that you're like oh I want to tag that up or uh, all the that. time <laughs> all the time and uh, I'm a big fan of graffiti and uh, like from trains to whenever I go out of town like that's one of the things that I look forward to like and the tr of the trip is seeing the different types of graffiti in other cities. It's like uh, exciting <laughs> to see that that style of art. And uh, I have dabbled in graffiti, but I feel like uh, I'm more of like not a fine artist because I've never I'm not trained at all. But uh, uh, definitely interested in that. But seeing blank walls. I do want to uh, throw some art on there. There's there's a lot of places in town where I feel like that's a good opportunity. Especially downtown. For something, yeah, especially downtown. So. Like downtown has those, all those brick walls that you just kind of like, man, it look nice to do. Like not just uh, like, a, uh, like a mural, like a rectangle, but like murals that incorporate the buildings themselves because of like just the old style windows. And yeah. If they just kind of clean them up a little bit. You know, they would look pretty nice, but well, we'll, see. we'll supposedly see downtown has a lot of plans, so we'll see in the future what uh, comes. <laughs> comes back in the that. back in the day, there was um, I think it was a city planner. I forget his name, but there was a guy that were proposing changing downtown, and one of them was like putting uh, I want to say a canal, like a canal people could go up and down the. Uh, like downtown like a venice From like on truxton yeah <laughs> like on truxton yeah. and then there was a uh, certain streets that they wanted to close off so it wouldn't be a street anymore uh, so some of the one ways yeah they would become um closed off and it would just be people like walking and be like a i really like an area for like restaurants to put that tables. i street mm -hmm. area and 19th where they did the whole where you could eat outside yeah where they cut by so that, that, that they would just pave it off and then it would only be for walking i liked no that course. where it was kind of like a sitting outside area but i'm sure that takes away from parking of course and that's taking from businesses so yeah definitely the parking structure thing is a, a problem but well there's a there's a need man maybe you can start a little tricycle thing where you like move people around from <laughs> their parking lot to wherever they oh like go. a well there is one guy that you know he, he's on that bike I haven't ran into him. Here in town? No, yeah, and you sit in the little cart. Yeah, in the yeah back. I have yeah. not seen him. Seen him. I th and it, I think he's always barefoot. I forget his name. But he it does exist. <laughs> we do have one of those guys here. He's barefoot. I wonder <laughs> if he has a story. Like an origin oh, story. Oh, I'm sure. Of, like, we got to find him. It's so. like meaningful for him to like sit there and do that. He lo He loves it. He really does. You can tell. He lives for it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, man, I was like doing ayahuasca and like I had this dream where I knew people need transportation. That's when I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I must do this. Um, doing art, do you um, do you feel that the when you come across um, I okay, I'll put it from my side. I guess I'll start over. So sometimes I see people who are, are professional artists. They they went to school to be artists. They're well known artists. They do great art and so you come across it and you see and like you're like holy shit how could i ever make something like that that shit is fuck like it's just so much to it more than than when you first start like myself i'm just learning how to mix paints um maybe doing a little bit of shadow and some layering but then you see other people and and the more you look at it and or the more you learn the more you realize that you don't know shit about <laughs> the shit that they're doing because they're not just mixing a color they're they're applying colors to the brush um so that they get a, a certain kind of look to it i'm sure there's only so much you can do but there, there there's more to what they're doing than than just like what you might think is like because i'm I getting better at we this don't know. <laughs> and i feel it like that can be applied to pretty much anything and it i like watching people that know what they're doing because it's mind-blowing 
especially when you don't know shit about anything and you just you're learning how s things are done professionally you're learning how things are done and uh, it's pretty whimsical sometimes to just watch someone do their thing and the outcome is like wow I, I could never do that <laughs> I could but it would take you know the time and the practice and I think I've noticed like they do a lot the layering that they do layers that's what I always say <laughs> in art is just when you're doing a painting when you first you know lay out your first layer it looks nothing like when you're done so it just takes patience and layers of color background shading it well it depends on what what you're painting but it's amazing what highlights and shading can do to just a normal you know little drawing or painting yeah yeah i've tried watching more videos on like coloring whether it be talking about tone or um, shading things like that the only art class i've ever taken was in high school and then I, i've taken brandon's art class which is super fun because he just lets you go he shows you you know what's up with what we're learning today and just lets you create and i love that but uh in in high school it was kind of like we got to read the book then apply the technique practice you know which was good because you do you know learn about the actual subject of art and and the origins and how many different cultures like have their own styles of art and history of art it's it, it's interesting the book stuff is a little boring because the actual hands-on is you know where you, where you want to be yeah do you have a favorite color? Um, it used to be blue because my it used to be <laughs> what you switched up on colors. What the fuck? I love all the colors now. Now that I know, <laughs> like, there's so many different variations, and like, you know, when you go into a an art store and you're looking at paint, or even like with spray paint, and there's just like hues of like every color, and it's like, how can I just like one color i don't know you, that's the thing isn't it you just you look and you're like I don't, for some reason i can't stop looking at these colors I lo I mine's love green them all. i love green green's a good color i just like green and, and people well why i actually thought about it because it was a school it was a school assignment and they're like pick a favorite color what's your favorite color and they were like just pick your favorite color the color that you enjoy i think we broke out to recess and so I was out at recess and I was looking around and I was like, I like green, man. Like the grass is green, the trees are green, money's green. Weed is green. <laughs> Weed is green now, right? <laughs> People say that. The herbs. The, 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 I forgot what Rastafarians call it. <laughs> the ganja? Ganja. <laughs> ganja. Um, and so after that, it was, I just, green's always been my favorite color. And for the same reason, I like it. That's how I like having, I like having plants and stuff. Yeah. Nature is, is healing. So green is, is a good color. This happened during COVID. Before I didn't really have any plants, maybe like outside plants, like just Mexican status. You just like, <laughs> just throw water on yeah. them or whatever. And then um, no pales. during the pandemic, uh, my girlfriend got, like I said, my girlfriend got into baking. I tried doing a little bit more art, but I was just working a lot. And so like plants were easy for me just to like come into the office and like just water them a little bit and chill for a little bit. That's good. These are very healthy, so it shows that, you know, you take care of them. I just recently got into air plants. So I, before I was just getting into, like, um, House like plants. regular plants, mm -hmm. I guess I would say, like, cactuses and succulents. And then I started getting bigger plants. And what I noticed is that the bigger plants, they, they're pretty good, but it takes a lot to take care of them. Yeah. So it's better to get them big. So... Instead of buying like one for five, dollars like, oh, it's little, it's five dollars, and I'm gonna grow it. Those Fuck are the that. hardest. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> that. You're gonna be, you're, half of them are gonna die. All right, so half of them are gonna die. So you're better off getting a bigger one and paying $30 or $20. And one, the, the planter is gonna be big enough, so you don't have to worry about switching it for a while. Yeah. And sometimes they have like babies, so like later on, if you are gonna propagate it, you can get more. 
you can just cut from you know yeah. the source i have a bunch of plants and they're all different i have a lot of babies and they have to be moved and the babies are the hardest to take care of you would think yeah they're cute they're small but then they start growing and then you're like shit i gotta switch them them, and it's dying it has too much light not enough light too much water not enough water it's like literally getting another pet or a kid or (laughs) something you have to like constantly take care of and it's good because your space you know becomes like more relaxing nicer to look at but plants are they're a responsibility they are um they're, they're, like I said, they're more my my hobby. My girlfriend will buy succulents and smaller plants, but she's she's she doesn't have to paint them. <laughs> so what usually happens is she's she'll she'll see it and she'll be like, oh, we should get it for the house because something about it. She somehow convinces me that I want it, and so then I'll get it, and then um, I end up watering it. He'll be the one to. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like watering because I what I've what I tried doing once was I tried. I'm not going to water it so she can see that she's not watering her damn plants. I'm, I'm not going to just do it for her. And so then I decided not to water them. And then I saw them turning like, like they were it's like, yeah, dying. they were getting sad. I was like, <laughs> I can't let not you die, work. man. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to do this. You're, like, you're, you're, you're not a means to my end here. Yeah. I'm going to have to change this up. Like, so no, I now I feel guilty because I saw it and I didn't do anything about it. And then um, even like in our, in our room, uh, I didn't have plants in my room for a long time. So... Um, I don't know. She like likes blacking out the the, the windows, uh, and so there's no light in there mm-hmm. ever. So the plants can't really be in there, and so um, I have plants in there now, but I, I have to like make it a habit to like open up the blinds and, and do all that stuff to make sure that the yeah. plants get light. Have... She's a va- she's a vampire. She doesn't like light at all. Maybe a fern would would do good. We in have there. one in the. Oh, I don't think. Well, when you, when you first come into the living room, there's a big ass fern. Yeah. I love ferns. I, and that one was a, uh, uh, that was a steal. I went to Lowe's, and there was like five of them that they just had shipped in, but they had, they all had the same price, and for some reason the one that was like huge had the same price for like twenty two bucks. So I told my girlfriend like, "Fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab that shit." So Sometimes they have good stuff there. I'll buy the sale plants. Like, mm-hmm. it'll just be like a little ugly, and I'll buy it, and then just bring it back to life and they have it on sale for like a dollar but originally they're expensive for some reason why plants would be expensive at Lowe's so I moved out so we went from we went from succulents and cactus no, we went from cactus to succulents to house plants to then I started getting air plants and so I have like 40 air oh, plants wow. here and I just got a shipment <laughs> A shipment of, of air plants? <laughs> of air plants. I'll show you. There in You're the kitchen. serious. There's another 50 up in there oh, in the shit. kitchen. And then and then uh, recently we started getting into Venus flytrap. Oh, I w- I've been wondering about those. That's cooler so learning, in that. I'm learning to take care of them. So, so what, it, what I have to do is, um, where's the thing for the stove? Somewhere you feed here. them? No. So actually what, what I learned is that when you feed them, they, they're actually using up a lot of energy and, and it'll stunt their growth. Oh. And so you don't have to feed them. They actually produce their own food through um, the water and sunlight. Oh, okay. What plants do? Yeah, so it's just, a, it, it's just a regular plant. It just happens that it could eat another like small insect. Something that lands in um, there. Yeah, for whatever reason. And so what I figured out too is that you're not... So you can't use regular soil you have to use like moss you use distilled water instead of regular water or tap water mm. you have to use distilled water and so you just like i just pour a little bit at the bottom of the cup and i just and leave let it, it there. soak from there let it soak for like a good hour then i just take it out and then i go to the other plant and if there's anything left then i just pour it out mm. or um and then i have the and then the air plants i was dipping them in water for like a half an hour once a week um but then I had like two of them die on me because I left them in there too long. Oh, they drowned. Yeah, I left them there for like a day, and then um, um, after that I started spraying them. So now I'm just doing a spray. So with distilled water, I have like a sprayer thing. So they just, stay just yeah. moist. Yeah, you just once a week. Just you don't even have to keep them moist or anything. They're supposedly, I mean, they're supposed to just stay alive. Just 
just, just leaving them there like that yeah Probably airplanes giving them are water interesting just so they grow a little bit but it's, it's like you're you're graduating from from no. yeah i'm gonna have like some tropical plant in here i know crazy, uh, just fucking crazy growing out the side of the banana, wall banana uh what are those like a palm banana palms right banana, palm. <laughs> banana palms i think that's what they're called but succulents and and cactus those are pretty easy to grow because those just live on their own i'm gonna when um when ricky bird makes a movie about when he needs like a botanist like i'll be the fucking botanist <laughs> the mad botanist, <laughs> the mad botanist. <laughs> speaking of that how did um can you talk about that movie or what can you say about that i don't know how that works uh, i do, think like, so it's announced movies. on that it's gonna be at uh sheesh what was horror fest or the premiere is on the 16th i believe but horror that, fest that's dope i i, I used to collect remember, all those damn movies uh what exactly the event is called but it's going to be in la Some type of film festival yeah it's a film festival it's a short film festival and uh they're debuting i don't know if i'm going to be able to make it but i would like to what um how did you how did you get uh involved and what role do you play are you um i've known ricky for a long time for okay. a really long time and he's been doing this for since everybody I've talks met about him. him he's like he he's like the what's the country guy's name that everybody's proud of buck owens oh yeah he's like the 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 buck owens of, of film oh, in cool. bakersfield like yeah. everybody knows who the fuck he is and everybody's so proud of him oh like, that's I'm all, good i'm always like i hope he doesn't get in trouble for something because everybody no, looks up to this hero. guy yeah everybody looks up to this guy uh actually yeah that that's true i've met people that i didn't even know would ever know him and they knew him and i was like what you know that you know it's a small town but, yeah but um Actually, those people weren't even from this town, so that's what made it more interesting. But um, so I've known Ricky for a long time, and he's always been doing hectic films. And I've once in a while, I used to help him a long time ago uh, with the filming. And not that I'm in his films; it's more like a behind the scenes, like uh, I would say, like an executive assistant <laughs> type of job uh not job but um position yeah um i forget what it's called what's the fancy word the film word for production or production manager or something like that i think so i think Inventory. it's production manager um so this time they are re or they did reboot the naked zombie girl movie and he just hit me up and said you want to help you know, just like you used to help. So I know how it goes with the forms, getting everyone to sign releases because it's got to be legal. Uh, contacting people to come in through email and going back and forth because when you're directing a movie and he's doing like editing, directing, writing, all of that stuff. So you don't have time to email extras and actors no. and yeah so it's, i feel good being a help and it also feels like cool to be helping like in a movie so uh there was that what uh what are you playing in the movie and th i was just doing the production management okay, okay, yeah okay. so i'm not i'm not in the movie i can't remember if um i think i was watching his youtube channel and I can't remember if it's going to be... Is it a remake or is it part two? I it, He said it was a reboot. So okay, okay. I so say it's a, over a remake, okay. right? Okay. Or a second rendition. Do you think you have it in you to be like an actress? No. <laughs> it's hard to be serious on video because you know you're being... You know when you're somewhere and you know they have cameras, so you're like, I know I'm being watched and heard right now. <laughs> Like when you're at work. How would you do? <laughs> how would you? How would you? Uh, you don't have to worry about you stealing on set, right? Because <laughs> you know they got cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I forgot what the fuck else to say. Something about the acting. Um, ah, I spaced out. I've been in a couple of his skits, 
and it i just i have no uh public speaking like that's what i was gonna ask so what seriousness happens, what happens if you get an interview for for like uh one of your murals or one of these uh, projects still, that i actually like, have hey, a want you be on the news we're gonna I, How actually, would you feel? I have been on the news and I'm just like nervous, you know, I just, I How don't did know. It go? I did horrible my first time on the news. Oh my God. She's like, oh, uh, we're here, out I here. <laughs> I stuttered. I repeated myself. I did. I repeated myself. And then I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> just like space out and like, damn it. <laughs> Everyone's watching. We're live. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. No, yeah, that sucks. It sucks. Public speaking it takes a, it takes a minute to get used to it. And I and I'm like two classes away from having a, a degree in communications. <laughs> well, you you understand the theory it doesn't mean that you you know it in. Uh, yeah, and even in the class with the public speaking, like, you could be. I guess like comedic or nonchalant, and the professor is just like. Just get it over with. So there's no real correction in your mannerisms for public speaking. But that's something that you have to, like, create on your own. Like, your persona in front of a camera, in front of a crowd, you know. And uh, still working on it. <laughs> I was taken back when I was in school that, or after I got a, a job, a professional job. When I was in school, when you had to talk, they would say, like, don't say, um... And don't don't really show pauses of what you're thinking. Just kind of memorize and, and read your speech. So I'd always practice. They would tell us like, "Oh, practice, I'll practice." And then, um, man, I got to a professional job. People, uh, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 how did my presentation's not working? It's just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, I it, thought this was like that's. It, I, no, I thought this was not what I thought. It pretty much turns into like a free for all, like a, in the real world. But I do, I have my my work voice, like when I answer the phone at work, and you know you're like professional, and then when you hang up, you're just like. Is this your work voice? No, <laughs> no, I do. I try not to say um, at, you know, at work, or in conversation. I try not to say yeah. But it's hard because, and like, I use like, like I all the time. I use like way too much, way too it's much, especially during the podcast. I embedded say, like, into the vocabulary of the modern person, you know, like professionalism. Where has that, where has that gone? I feel like more relaxed. I'm able to be more expressive, and um, I don't know, not. Not more honest, but more like comfortable and open when you can just, you know, be yourself instead of having to be like posture and uh, and a good vocabulary. If you owned a words. if you owned a business, would you would you feel comfortable hiring someone with like just face tattoos? Yeah, because I mean, I saw a guy today and he had like face tattoos, and his grandma was driving the car and i was thinking like what did she think when she first saw her grandson come all home all blasted with tattoos well, she's a sugar mama oh she's he just she's been she was letters, driving so she got out, of, so. got out of jail she went pick him up right now she's like oh, i'm taking this he home. did have that jail body so <laughs> that might be that might be the case but i was like well she probably loves him no matter what and the Poor tattoos or you know it's just what someone looks like but uh, if I owned a business, the face tattoos, depending on what it is, <laughs> that wouldn't be an issue. But demeanor, also, that's another. What if he just has, like, um, tribal tattoos on his face? That's cool. Okay. That's um, even better. <laughs> what if he has on his face, he has, like... Like a, a weird person, like Putin. He has a tattoo of Putin on his face. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Try, um, no hot topic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if his face says, like, murder, murder one at yahoo.com? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. No, I don't know. No. Okay. 
I would hire that guy. The Putin thing, that's just... That's too much. <laughs> Putin. <laughs> but murder, murder. I don't know. I had a friend. He, um... I ran into him. He was homeless. I think I've told the story on this podcast. Ten, ten episodes and I'm repeating stories already. Um... I went back home to visit and I ran into a friend at a bar and he was homeless. Long conversation short, he had been homeless for a while and I had offered to him to come live with me out here in Bakersfield oh, really? and try to get his life together. He just got drunk every day, pass out. Um, he didn't have a phone, so I was, I was telling him to put my phone number on his resume. I would never get any calls. So I'm like a month, two months in, and I'm like, bro, like nobody's calling you, man. Can I take a look at your resume? And all? And all. he's like, no, 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 man. Like, um, at first he didn't, he didn't know how to make one, and he didn't want me to make it because his mom had already made him one. So already the conversation, yeah, the conversation's already like it's a sus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Um. So, anyways, one day I'm 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 walking out of my room, and he had left some paperwork on my desk, and so I went to like just kind of put it to the side. And I noticed this is his resume. And so I look at his resume and his email is murder murder one oh. at yahoo.com. And so I always make fun of everybody and I even use him I use him as an example all the time when I was a social worker and I would talk to my kids about like I don't know what it is, but like badass kids and, and even when I was bad, you kind of make excuses for your behavior by saying that that you know, people shouldn't give a fuck. It's none of their fucking business, you know, yeah. how I am or how I talk or how I dress and shit. But it goes too far to the point where people think that they could just do whatever they want and nobody nobody should say anything about them. Yeah. And I'm telling them, like, hey, like, look at someone trying to give my friend a job. And he puts this email. Like, there, there's no way he's ever going to get a job because it doesn't, it's not a good representation. Right away, work. that does not appeal to people. <laughs> like, they're like, okay, skip this guy. <laughs> Like, and so I, I tell everybody, like, no, like, get yourself a nice fucking email. Don't get, like, don't be one line dime at yahoo.com. Oh, man. I have a, <laughs> my email has been the same email name since I was, like, in junior high. It's, <laughs> it's gaba gaba hey you. And I do, it's on my resume. Like, Shut the fuck up. I just, I don't know why I won't change it or get a professional. Uh, Mine's my professional full name. Email. This is my full name at gmail.com something's wrong with me um <laughs> it's like the first session of uh, the first lecture you get in business classes like your email change your email like something professional no wonder <laughs> i've talked to people about changing their email how about like uh they have like hotmail still or they have uh, aol is there still hotmail yeah it's all those shit still work yahoo still works yahoo's not even a fucking email anymore no Nah, that shit got like. Um, Someone just gave me a Yahoo email the other day. It got changed know. to something that got bought out, but you, it's like anything you can still keep your old email. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's still some server that still works it, whatever. Mm. Um, another story about this friend. Um, another time, and this was. This was some time after, my dad had gotten sick, and I went to go take care of him, and while I was there, I just. I needed a job. I needed a part-time job. And then when I went to go get a part-time job, I was like, fuck, I haven't made like minimum wage in a long time. And I was like, fuck, this shit ain't shit. And so what turned out to be uh, wanting a part-time job, I ended up getting like five jobs. <laughs> and then I would just um, leave one job and go to the next. And I had clothes on my car. I had to go home, shower, come back. Yeah. Whatever I needed to do. I worked from like as soon as the mall opened to like the time that the mall closed. And it was just right down the street from my house. So. I was just like, um, it was like whatever. Um, and my friend, that same friend, he couldn't get a job. And so his mom was like, this fool can't get a job. Right? He got fucking and he five, has five jobs. jobs. <laughs> yeah. He's been in town for two weeks. You know what? I've heard that one before. <laughs> and so I was telling her, I was like, well, I, it's because I'm overqualified. And people, they always ask me, why do I want a job if I'm overqualified? And I'm like, and I'll tell them the truth. Like, hey, man, my dad's sick. I'm just out here for, for maybe a year, year and a half. Where was that at? Uh, Banning. Towards like Palm Springs area. Okay, south, right? South of here, yeah. South going east towards like Redlands, Riverside. Oh, okay. Um, and so um, I take him to go get a job, and then uh, he gets an interview, right? Because this time, uh, this time I think I had worked on his resume, and um, we Give clean, him a I, or his mom cleaned it up. I can't remember. We talked to him, we cleaned it up, and then I think um, we walked around looking for for him to get a job somewhere, 
And so he um, he got an interview, and he comes out of the interview. And I was like, "How's it go?" He's like, "Went fucking went fucking good, bro." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." So I was like, "What? What happened? Tell me about it." And he's like, "He's like, so they asked, what do you do? <clears throat> what do you do if someone steals something and they're running out of the store?" And so he was going for like loss prevention. <laughs> so he's like, "I fucking chase him and they take him down." <laughs> Shit, you know, like, and they're like. Well, what if what if he he can harm you? What if he has a weapon or something, you know? And you're chasing him, and he's like, he's like, I'm willing to die for, I'm willing to die for this store. <laughs> They're like, yes, I'm willing to die for this store. We and want I was that like, guy. no, wrong fucking answer. Fool. Was it Walmart? No, it was a oh. uh, it was a uh, Tommy Hilfiger. Oh, <laughs> and I go, I go, no, no, fool, that's the wrong answer. You're supposed to say you just make a good. Uh, notice of, of what they're wearing and a description of them because the insurance takes care of it. There's no reason for you to get hurt. Yeah, There's no they reason can for you to do anything. To... And so he was like, oh. <laughs> and then they, I think they called him like within a few hours. And oh, like, really? You got the fucking job. And he's like, yeah, I yeah. told you, boo. Um, it was the willing to die part. They were like, yes. I was like, I'll die for this shit. <laughs> we want that type of dedication. <laughs> They put, him, they put him to work and they were he was, uh, who knows what he was if he was lying or nothing but they were like giving him mad hours they were just giving him a lot and so what was he oh loss prevention yeah so he went for loss prevention but they ended up giving him a job like working in a stock room because he wanted more hours and mm-hmm. then they were just they just thought he was a big dude so they saw that he would work well in there so they put him back there and they started giving him more and more hours and so he started working more more hours and I think he was trying to kind of do what I was doing like just work more hours but I have I don't know if it's just some people can just work more hours or something I don't know what it is but um, I didn't have any issues. <laughs> this fool started like smoking meth so that he could work all the hours. Wow, <laughs> just cut down on the hours. Like if it's bad but enough, but he was still to... not working. I was I was working way more, but I was I would be tired. I just had like a routine that I would follow. He just wanted to smoke the meth. I think. Yeah, he had a problem with it before too. I think that's the problem too. Like people go back to drugs and stuff. It's just easier. And so just do drugs. Yeah, this is gonna be different this time. I'll just smoke a little bit. Yeah. Like, I'll, co- I'll, I'll control it. Better. <laughs> I'll control it better this time. I'll um, schedule. I'll microdose. I'll on my two o'clock. Micro- I'll microdose on some, on the pipa. <laughs> do you have any goals for for what you're gonna do with your art? Um. No, actually, I just I just do it. Uh, I would like to make some money. I've had I've made so many and it's really like when you get the right opportunity and it was fun and you got paid is like that's goal but we all know if you're an artist that that doesn't pay the bills for some artists it does but them's the the you know i had um i had this lady here i met her through uh, deidre and brandon she owns the locale uh, restaurant overall by the post oh, office. Yeah. She was here and then, um, I, I don't did know. the I mural was... in the alley. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we did the mural there for her. She um, she came over, she did an interview, and she started, like, telling me about, like, business and owning a business and was just kind of dissecting me, um, talking about, like, certain stuff. Um, I just realized, like, fuck, man, like, well, she was explaining to me about art because I was telling her, like, I don't really know what prices to put. I don't even know how to say how good my stuff is. And I don't even know how to get started. So really, my only idea was to ask a few people, hey, um, tell me what to make. And I'll make it for you and just let me, like, promote it that I made it. Mm-hmm. thought that would be, like, the simplest thing. Um, but she was talking about how to break down the price of pretty much what would you want to make a year that you would make at your job. And so she like broke down the math of how many, how much my time was worth. Mm-hmm. She gave me that number, and then I was she's like, and then just multiply it to figure out how much art you have to sell. So it's it's also like a way of telling yourself how much your art should be sold for, but it also tells you that if you want to make so much based on your art, then you need to input so many hours. You have to input so many hours into art in order it, to make back your what you're like a job. Making. So it's just like a job. So mm-hmm. I was just like, oh. Never mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was just like, "Oh man, is there a price 
a point where you would get if people are giving you like um um commissions to like do do certain art where um, you would go okay i'm gonna quit my job and just do this full time i find that pricing art personally it's difficult because sometimes i just want to give it away but i'm like no why are you giving it away like the point was to make money on it you know so and deidre gave me some good advice is whatever you're thinking double it and that's true because i tend Ten million dollars i tend to like <laughs> lowball myself and like why are you all the time and effort and creativity you put into something and like you only want to sell it for so much like really it's worth more than that like you're worth more than you think you know so that was a good um perspective do you um do you see yourself going a certain way with your art, like doing a particular type of art? Or are um, you still figuring that out, what you like? No, since I'm, I'm like a fan of just all mediums, I think that is what helps me stay interested in art is doing it all, you know? And I think that's what I love about art is there's endless possibilities uh, with different mediums and like types and I don't really have like a goal for to to get to. I just want to make art, you know. Life's short, so make art. I guess what is the saying? <laughs> Isn't that a saying? Uh, I actually have a meeting tomorrow with someone that hit me up for a mural at their restaurant, mm -hmm. and it's a whole like big wall, and I felt like wow like where did you find me you know and they said that they were looking through the creative crossing page and um uh, they just i don't know if i was just like randomly picked out of all the artists that are on you know that help out with that but i felt honored and uh it was it was a uh, pretty cool when someone comes to you and asks you you know i like what you do and i want you to do that for me and i want to pay you for it so and and the balls in your court in that situation where they're letting me know what they're looking for and I can give them my um, creative rendition of what their idea is and then give them a price you know this is what I'm charging for you know what you want and okay either you take it or leave it do you look at their jewelry or like their clothes to like figure out the price <laughs> no i haven't met this person yet so i my, will um, <laughs> my mom um <laughs> it's like the third time i, sh I throw shade at my mom i do this podcast <laughs> well my mom would type up i don't even have to say she's my mom i could have just said some lady <laughs> right um so this lady she uh she was telling me about how when she goes to see a lawyer she doesn't go in her own car <laughs> oh really <laughs> She'll go in the helps car or something, or she'll um she'll take off her jewelry. She'll take off her jewelry and then like borrow a car to go see. Oh. And so whenever she needs like services, she'll go like that because she knows that if she goes in her car or wears her jewelry, that people charge her more. Mm -hmm. So she'll just play it as if like she doesn't have things. It's a sliding scale. Yeah. Meanwhile, my mom has like this like crazy ranch and shit. So it's like they'll never know. <laughs> she puts the. The whole outfit, some yeah. dirt. <laughs> <laughs> she, she tries to pretend she works at the factories. She puts on the apron and shit. Yeah. She ties on the apron. That's nah, fucked up. Um, no, mom, my mom's a really good lady. She just um, doesn't want to get overpriced. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> well, people will. They'll do it. They'll uh, take advantage. I was walking down um, in LA. I was walking down this road when I was living out there. And... Um, that day I was just, I felt kind of lazy. So I, I just got dressed lazy. So I just had like some shorts and like some flip flops and like a, like a vintage shirt. My beard was all fucked up. My hair was all fucked up. I had like, I just looked like lazy. I just looked lazy. But I had like this like bag that I got when I went to Peru that, that this like sh uh, shaman lady made for me. And so I just had that, that bag. Cause it was just something to carry. I just was, again, I was just being lazy and I didn't want to put stuff in my pocket. So I just put it in, a, I grabbed that bag and I wore it and I walked and, um, I was walking and I saw this, 
this building and I was wondering like what the fuck what the, what is this building you know like it's just it doesn't show why it's there there's no marketing to about it or nothing so I was just like it's not an apartment like there's a bunch of vintage shit like why does only this one not have a, a sign so I hit the button I hit the button and this lady comes out and she's like can I help you and I was like um well I noticed that there's all these antique shops and when I got to yours there was nothing so I was just wondering what you got <laughs> And what she kind of laughed. <laughs> she laughed and she goes, Come on in. So I go in and she had like this crazy uh collection of what she said was like Norwegian art. And there was like chess pieces and um some like a lot of it looked like war scenes with like like Was it like a like, gallery? It just looked like an antique shop. It was just sta- shit just stacked up and, and, and or disorganized. Uh, with like little tickets on it and mm-hmm. then when i went to go look at this little fucking stone thing shit was like fourteen hundred dollars for like this little fucking piece and you needed the whole set so i was just like wow and so i'm looking around looking around she goes yeah so you see anything you're interested in sir blah, blah, blah. and i was like <laughs> i was like yeah it all looks pretty nice i was like um i don't have a place here to put in any of this but my roommate would probably appreciate some of this art i'll, I'll probably let him know come check it out and she goes, oh, okay, yeah, I appreciate it. Here's my card and blah, blah, blah. She was talking to me. And she t- totally talked to me pretty nice. I was like, she wasn't like, I know I'm broke. So I'm like, uh, she was being pretty yeah. nice to me. She wasn't being like, a, like, get the fuck out of here, broke ass, you know. And so I left. I tell my friend about it. And he starts laughing. He goes, you know what? You, you looked all intrinsic. Or was it? Was he, what was the word he used? I looked a certain way where, like, I looked like I had money and that I just didn't go fuck. Because oh. I guess I had like nice stuff on. I just was dirty, you yeah. know, like I just wasn't like ironed or anything like that. And so he's like, nah, you just look like you didn't go fuck, bro. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, there's people out here like that. You know, they just they got money and they don't really care about how they look. And they just walk around like, what the fuck are you going to tell them? You know, they got money. They don't care what you have to say. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, OK. I kind of uh, I've learned a few times that that if you um, if you look the part and you just play the part. You can, you can get pretty far. When I got into the the Netflix as a joke, um, a lot of that was just acting like I didn't, like like I was somebody when I wasn't anybody. Pretty much like anything, just if you pretend you know what you're doing, like you just fuck it, you know. Somehow you make it, you make it through there, and and you you're like, wow, I, <laughs> you know, I pulled it off. Um, I gotta meet up with Brandon because we're gonna do for the haunt, uh, do something for the haunted house. Um, I wish we could have gone longer, but uh, I forgot that I was have to meet with this guy at six thirty. Oh, that's fine. Um, any any shout outs or any information we should know? Where can people find you? Uh, commissions? Uh, mostly on my Instagram, which is one line dime. Uh. <laughs> I could have swore I spell- said online. <laughs> I, you know what? Dime. I've been reading online dime for like the longest fucking time. That's hilarious. I have noticed that before, and I was like, I wonder if people would would th- would think that it's one line dime. O n e line l i n e underscore d i m e. You can find me there <laughs> on the. Oh, I thought word. it had to do something. I, I, I swear I thought it had like a deep meaning for like the longest time. I was like, I wonder if there's like a meaning to that. <laughs> so many people do ask. I'm like, whatever you want it, whatever you want it to mean. So, so I, okay, that's that's it's, funny. People it's not as exciting way. probably as people think. Um, so they can contact you there if they want to do commissions, if they want to learn more about the, your project. Mm-hmm. Um, you said you do those was it every other month or every month? I try to do every uh, two months. Every two months. Uh, it's usually a Saturday. I try to go for the second Saturday of the month and always at 8 a.m. at Mill Creek Park, the park by the the art museum downtown. Yeah. And uh, just usually I do a fresh food item like fruit or oatmeal. Last time I did a pasta salad with a bag of hygiene products like a kit usually just like soap deodorant toothbrush toothpaste just like the necessary items and uh, if you want to donate or if you're in need or know someone in need I usually try to post at least a week or two in advance just to kind of get it out there but 
and uh, burrito project that's every sunday what's every sunday every sunday is burrito project and they are on they're at the gleaners it's by the circle it's like right behind there's that like motorcycle club on that street they're called like ace of spades or something like that oh that's a motorhead song it's um, uh it's it's right behind the train tracks man I, train tracks i'm a terrible uh, uh, i live in the city and I, it, on chester or, or where it's to the right of chester when you're like at that circle you know how you get to that 34th street burger or what the cafe 24th street cafe no there's a muffler shop at the circle and then yeah, there's right like that on, uh, chester uh chester and um um can't Golden remember. State. Yeah, Golden State. It's like right behind that. Okay. I forget what that street is. F Street? No. Anyway. At the Gleaners. Just look up, look up <laughs> Google Gleaners. Gleaners and they're there every Sunday. Um Yeah, I, I've always noticed that there's always a, a lot of charitable organizations here that giving out clothes and food. I recently found out that um, homeless people don't get a lot of socks. Yeah, that's what I... I don't know if I just fell for the advertisement, people selling socks online, but... Uh, that's what I always get. <laughs> but give. apparently, that's... that's uh, in the bags, we, we always socks. try to give socks. I I met a guy in one of the events where he said he had been going, like, weeks without socks, and he was just wearing shoes, and it was really cold. So I can imagine just, like, your frozen-ass feet in old, dirty, beat-up shoes, you know, and you're not wearing socks for weeks and you're walk all they do is walk you know everywhere up and down the streets so just imagine what his feet do you have a solution for the homelessness in bakersfield i don't because it's so many things so many people are different like their situation to as why they're homeless and it's i don't feel like it's one solution because there's so many variations of why they're there and i ask myself all the time is about you know the substance abuse problem but it's not just here like it's everywhere and yeah. i feel like even younger people are like getting addicted to drugs and what is what is the cause of that and, and which is a lot of variations as well it's poverty uh look at you know the world is stressful people just want to relax i guess but i mean i just smoke and have a you know occasional beer i, I it could be a lot of things some of its personalities i i personally think um it starts with education I think a lot of it is is a lack of education, um, going out into the world without the ability to hold down a job or understand the need of like budgeting. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't even budget. Um, so I think all those things lead to not having a job. Uh, it leads to, unfortunately, I think if people have a I don't want to say like dumb people having dumb dumb people but I, I think a lot of it has to do with something with that like people just not being educated and not seeing the value of of saving your money having a job I can agree with nine to five. the education part even if you know it doesn't have to do with it just at least and also like bad parenting just bad parenting people just uh, not knowing how to you know having not having direction for themselves and it's not like you had to pass a test to have a kid. You know, let's just be straight with that. It, it, took, it, takes, the, it, it takes no education. <laughs> yeah. um, very minimal, at least. And so I think a lot of those people get themselves in a situation where they don't, they've never been taught how to take care of their kids. Um, and so you just get more and more of, of, of people who have no direction. And it's like generational trauma. <laughs> It's yeah, like, it's just a lot of it. I mean, a lot of people I know don't don't see the point of, 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 of working. They just see, like, what's the point? Like, I can, I, can, I can get benefits and get by. 
um, and then just have like a side hustle to have a little bit more. Or I can work nine to five like you're telling me and you're going to have the same shit I have. So why would I work harder to be in the same spot? That's a mentality. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what a lot of people tell themselves, that, that they're, they're like somehow freer when they're like, um, they're really not because you're... You're dependent. You're, you're, you're dependent on benefits. You're, you're not going anywhere further. The, the things that you have are, are temporary. Um, I think it's just hard for people in general. But it's a lot of mental health too is it what your mental uh status <laughs> or no that definitely too i see people running up credit cards uh people I, I just remember people like having more fun than me when i was younger and i was like man how the fuck do people record this shit yeah and i i was just didn't realize that i was just frugal and then when i came across other people who had more things i was just like man they must make really good money and then as I got older, Sometimes they were struggling, yeah. and I was, like, chilling. I was just like, oh, I got extra money now. And they were in debt. They were, like, filing bankruptcy. They were, uh, you know, repoing their stuff. That's bad spending. Is f- being frivolous is, that's, sometimes. Are you frivolous? Are you, are you, are you good with money? I like cautious with my because i grew up poor so i'm like money's gonna run out and then you know uh, you i've hoarder? been do you hoard food no a little <laughs> bit i eat it though it gets eaten <laughs> my my uh my girlfriend's out of town for a week she was uh, doing some training and um she made me she made me like a big ass thing of uh, enchiladas and uh, ordered me a bunch of tamales oh and so i've gone through like half of it already <laughs> Um, I'm not. I'm not really good with with <laughs> budgeting with food. Yeah. So she just bought me a bunch of food. Cause like I'll, I ate it I'll just get at McDonald's every day. Yeah, she didn't want you out getting all the bad food. Homemade is is better. Well, you say you can cook. I would imagine you cook some bomb ass food all the time. Do you cook for yeah, your boyfriend? When I'm not. Yes, I do. Does he appreciate it? Yes, he does. It's good. It's good food. That. So is your boyfriend the, the same guy that that was not that you have boyfriends all the time or something? I don't know. You <laughs> With the glasses um, and the long hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he brought you some food when you were doing the the chalk art. Oh yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, so you've been together for some time. Uh, over a year. Oh okay. And does he do art as well? No, he's a, a bicycle mechanic. He works at Snyder's. Okay. Does he do bikes himself? Does he is he a bike rider? Mm-hmm. Does he ride bikes? He's a cyclist. What? He has a lot of bikes actually. Bikes yeah. are pretty cool. Have you gotten into it? Are you into it? Uh, I have a bicycle. I'm not like, eh, I don't. I'm not into it as like. If he, he told is, you like, no, nah, let's do a ride. Let's do a, a ride from here to here. You're not gonna like jump on that. It depends. You're gonna be like, eh, yeah. I'll I just. You. I'll bring you water. <laughs> I'll drive in you. I'll meet you there. <laughs> He'd be like, okay. He does like long rides, like. 20 miles, 70 miles. He's just... What is he listening to when he goes on there? I don't the road? know. Is he listening to the road? The no, wind? I know he's like probably some R&B or something. Uh, what kind of music you listen to? All kinds of music. You seem pretty interesting when you're... when you're uh, The stuff you different posts, like it's like, man, is she like a... Is she like a... Am I a rocker fool? Uh, yeah, like Mexican <laughs> rock. Is she like Mexican rock? Is she goth? Is she like, what's going on here with uh, the different like... I like everything. She's heavy I metal over here. I have here. appreciation for everything um country is the only old country like the classic country i could do that but i like older older country the new no. rap country stuff i just i can't uh, no. not my thing what um what's your favorite metal band metal oh. or the whole genre of metal it doesn't have to be like death metal or goth metal or death or whatever uh metal i don't know like rock i like motorhead we talked about motorhead Shut earlier yeah, yeah. Motor, i was thinking motorhead right now it's one of my favorite motorhead. <laughs> they're good i like motorhead because they're like a good uh example of like rock and roll yeah and even the the character even the the lead singer man that guy was he Let partied, me. yeah he party card yeah that was kind of like the how would you say <laughs> the 
definition sorry the definition of you know of what a rock and roll like singer would be like is the live fast die fast uh well he lived of. a long time yeah he did <laughs> yeah so he, that drink he was, died slow <laughs> yeah they said that he would drink like a, a pint of of uh jack daniels and he, and he lived on top of like a bar or some shit oh really People say, people oh well, people tell you know, kinds of shit and they I, have I'm, I'm the, gullible. I'll repeat that shit if I. They'll because. have the stories like, a guy writes a book that was his neighbor or something, you know, like I yeah I knew him. <laughs> Do you have any rock and roll aspirations? Um, no. You gonna I, join a rock band? A chick rock I band would. Rock I actually, band? I have this like daydream in my head all the time that to do like a punk band or like a rock band, but in Spanish, Spanish and English, but. Uh, Broken in Spanish? Yeah. You all about that? I love it? it. I love just... Dude, Mexicans are rockers. They love it. I, when I was in LA, um, I dated this girl. I'm going to edit this out. <laughs> We're broken up. But this I lady, dated, you know. Hey, you <laughs> so I, I've heard there's an LA scene for... <laughs> For uh, rock and español, and there's a lot, there's a lot of it. I would go to, I would go to these bars, and there'd just be all kinds of people just rocking out all the fucking time. Even like there's this uh, older guy at my job, and he loves rock and español. And I was like, what? That's cool. Like you just got ten points cooler. <laughs> like I, um, when I was younger, I didn't. I I thought I thought the people who who dressed like that were kind of cool, but I always imagined like their feet stink. <laughs> Because they just have these boots all yeah. the time. So I was like, their feet got to stink. Feet. I was just like, ugh. Like, imagine you bring this girl over and she kicks her boots off. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, let's take a shower. It's like, what the fuck? Wash those feet. Um. All right. So I think we touched on everything. And then we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do this again if you want. And we'll have more time. Yeah. Um. I'll be more versed in who I am. <laughs> Uh, well, that's usually how I start the conversations because that's like the easiest thing to ask. But for the most part, it usually like leads to like other random, random yeah. talks about random shit. There's no point to it. Most of it's just kind of talking to local people, um, getting an idea from them, kind of what's going on. I like that. Where it's just not, it's not really like a scripted thing. It's just like a little free for all. <laughs> I do need to get better at making like, uh, like clips, um, transitions and like some of the editing stuff star swipe but for the most part i just kind of just put it up do it you do the thing the, the only thing i've gotten caught up is again having to go back and edit some stuff because some people were like oh i didn't mean to talk shit about one person <laughs> was talking and again she was talking about a client and then another person was talking about like a, an owner of some business and then another person was just like talking shit just like to talk shit and i was like i'm gonna take that out um, one girl, she didn't ask me, but I took it out because I, I'm going to go ahead and end all this. Uh, I took it out because um, 